What are the best protein sources? Is it chicken? Is it veggie proteins like pea, rice, or hemp? What about soy? How about red meat, fish, pork, or eggs? Which one is the best protein? Now in this one, we're gonna be going over the difference between how an animal is raised. So if it's commercially raised, organic, wild caught, things like that, and why that's actually really important. Then we'll discuss the seven protein sources from worst to best. And these rankings are also gonna be based on nutrient density as well, because that should be a huge priority when eating any type of food. And then if you stick around to the very end, I'm gonna let you in on some really cool news that I think you may wanna take advantage of. All right, let's jump in. Now, humans have only had agriculture for about 10,000 years, which isn't very long when compared to the 300,000 years that we've actually been around. But cows, on the other hand, were domesticated about 10,000 years ago as well. And they're actually the descendants of aurochs, which were on our planet for about 2 million years, give or take. And these aurochs, just like cows, had four stomachs that were perfect for digesting grass. So basically what I'm saying is that we haven't really been eating grains very long. And this also means that aurochs, the descendants of cows, didn't evolve to eat grains either. And therefore, cows probably shouldn't be eating grains. So when cows are grass-fed, we know their meat and their fat are higher in B vitamins, higher in fat-soluble vitamins. They have more omega-3 fatty acids, more minerals, and more antioxidants. So what I'm trying to say is that it's always best to eat a source of protein that comes from its natural environment when it's able to consume the food that it's evolved to eat. And I say this because I feel that when humans get too involved and control all aspects of raising animals and growing crops, it's typically not the best for anyone involved since nutrient density is typically going to go down. And I know it can get a little bit expensive, but if you can stick to the pasture-raised, organic, wild-caught, things like that, you're gonna be getting that better nutrient quality. Now let's talk about protein, worst to best. Yes, I'm sure the anticipation is killing you. Number seven, soy. So the story of soy is actually pretty interesting. Over 2,500 years ago, soy wasn't really consumed by very many people, not even Asian cultures. Why is this though? Well, they knew that it wasn't easily digestible. It caused gas, bloating, and other digestive issues. Soy's main purpose was actually used to enrich other plant crops, and it wasn't until they learned that the process of fermentation could help make soy more digestible and edible, and this is when people started to consume it just a little bit though. Now fast forward to the early 1900s. Henry Ford, the gazillionaire who made automobiles, was a huge fan of soy products. He loved it because you could use it for an incredible amount of industrial products. He actually believed that soy products would be the material of the future for car bodies, for window frames, steering wheels, gear shift knobs, bathtubs, sinks, and refrigerators. And he even created a prototype for his soybean car. But once World War II happened and there were some major food shortages and famine, cheap soy started being distributed as a food product. And then by the 1970s, soy became the popular health food that it is today. Now, there are three big negatives in my eyes when it comes to soy. It's not easily digestible. It has high amounts of anti-nutrients like phytic acids and trypsin inhibitors, and it contains a really high amount of phyto and xenoestrogens. The only real benefit is that it's a complete protein, but it's not as bioavailable as animal protein. So with soy, it just kind of comes with too much baggage that can potentially irritate our digestive systems. It can prevent us from absorbing really important nutrients from our nutrition, and it can also be disruptive in a variety of different ways with our hormones in our body. Moving on to plant proteins. So plant proteins are literally more popular than ever. It almost kind of feels like everything is plant-based these days, and it's actually easier than ever to find an organic plant-based protein or meal replacement shake. And these shakes can actually be pretty affordable too, and plants tend to seem pretty healthy. So what's the problem here? Well, there are are definitely some cons and some big reasons why I don't love these types of proteins. First, you're gonna be getting an objectively inferior source of amino acids. So the amino acid profiles are essentially just gonna be subpar compared to animal protein. Second, they contain anti-nutrients just like soy, which are preventing us from digesting and absorbing some of those key nutrients in whatever we're trying to eat or consume. And you can also get some potentially high levels of heavy metals. So here are four different 
finds from the Clean Label project when they tested 53 different plant-based protein powders. Number one, approximately 75% had measurable levels of lead. The lab doing the testing actually discovered that the plant-based protein powders each contain on average twice the amount of lead per serving compared to other products. Number two, in addition to lead, the plant-based protein powders contain mercury, cadmium, and arsenic in several cases above health-based guidelines. Number three, 55% of protein powders tested had measurable levels of BPA, a known endocrine disruptor. And number four, certified organic products average twice as many heavy metals, which is a total bummer because one would usually think that organic products have a higher quality and are typically better for us. Now, if you can find a nice and clean plant-based protein powder, then you're in good shape, but you're still kind of dealing with the less than ideal amino acid profiles and anti-nutrients. Moving on to chicken and poultry. So poultry is a complete protein, which is great, and it actually has much better amino acid profiles than plant-based proteins, but there are gonna be a few things that we need to be considering before we start eating our next chicken salad. Now, unless it's pasture raised, poultry is typically gonna be corn or grain fed. So here's what grain fed chicken feed actually looks like. They typically contain about 70% grains like wheat, barley, sorghum, and about 20% oil seed meals like soybean and canola meal. And they're given supplements that account for about the other 10% of the feed. Sounds pretty great, right? But it's probably not the best thing to be eating animals that require supplementation because the quality of food is so low. Additionally, this type of poultry feed leads to the fat having high concentrations of linoleic acid, which is a really unstable fatty acid. It oxidizes easily and can actually lead to inflammation and weight gain. I'm not saying that eating chicken makes us fat, but eating a lot of chicken can actually contribute to our overall consumption of linoleic acid because, well, it's the end of 2021 and we eat a lot of processed food and linoleic acid is found in all of these refined oils that are in almost all processed foods. And we're also consuming more linoleic acid than we ever have before. So if you wanna know more about how refined oils and linoleic acid can lead to weight gain, watch this video right here. Also, if you're enjoying this video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more content like this. Next on the list, we have pork. So outside of the taste, the texture, and the species, pork actually shares a couple of similarities with poultry. So like poultry, it's complete protein, which is great. The protein has high bioavailability, which is also great, but they also don't eat their natural diet. And as a result, their tissue and fat can be high in linoleic acid, but not as much as poultry. Now pig feed can actually consist of ingredients like rice bran, broken rice, corn, soybeans, cassava, oil oil seed extracts, fatty acids, vegetables, pig vitamins and minerals, and distillers residues, which are basically just the remnants from alcohol distilleries and breweries, all sounds delicious. It's also pretty hard to find really good quality pork, and I've never actually found it at a grocery store. The best pork I've ever been able to get is when it's not given antibiotics, and to be honest, I can't really ever recall seeing super high quality pork anywhere. So it really is difficult to come by unless maybe you live near a pasture-raised pig farm or you do some really heavy digging on the internet. All right, we're starting to get into some of the proteins on the healthier side, a little bit more nutrient dense. Let's talk about wild caught seafood and fish. Now first, fish is a complete protein, which is fantastic. And the protein has high bioavailability. And a lot of fish like salmon are also gonna be high in omega-3 fatty acids, which is really great due to the anti-inflammatory properties. But this is only if it's wild caught though, because farmed salmon and fish are just like poultry and pork. They get fed all this bizarre food that they're not really supposed to be eating. So some of the ingredients that are actually found in the fish feed include things like corn, gluten, ground up feathers, soybeans, chicken fat, genetically engineered yeast, vitamins, and minerals. And farm salmon is also supplemented with astaxanthin, which helps produce that nice pink salmon color that they should normally have. And normally salmon would actually get this naturally through eating things like krill, but my guess is that if farm salmon was not fed astaxanthin, it would look 
pretty pale and gross. Also, when it comes to fish, we have to be a little bit more mindful of heavy metals like mercury. So the bigger the fish, the more heavy metals it's likely going to contain. And we also don't really want to eat canned fish either because metals from the can and also the plastic lining from the can can actually leach into the fish. So if you're going to do seafood or fish, make sure it's wild caught and even try to eat smaller fish like salmon. It'll be richer in omega-3s and have more nutrient density and carry a smaller toxic load. All right, let's talk about eggs now. So eggs might actually be considered the perfect protein and that's because they have the best bioavailability and digestibility of all whole unprocessed proteins. Not only that, but they're loaded with some of the best healthy fat sources and they're filled with tons of vitamins and minerals like B vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin E, selenium, and they're loaded with choline as well. So what is the problem with eggs though? Is it that they're high in cholesterol and saturated fat? Though they are high in both of those things, that's not the actual problem. And I'll talk about that in a minute though. I would say that the big problem with eggs is that people can actually develop intolerances and sensitivities to them. So this is why when people go on autoimmune diets or elimination diets, eggs are generally removed. But in my mind, that's really the only issue with eggs. So if you're one of the lucky ones who can eat eggs no problem, then you're consuming one of the best types of food and protein on the planet. And for my number one source of protein, well, that is gonna be beef. I'm sure a lot of you think that this is an outrageous statement, but let me explain. So beef, particularly grass-fed beef, is loaded with vitamins B12, B3, B6. It also contains highly bioavailable iron, selenium, and zinc. And in fact, red meat contains almost every single nutrient that you need to survive, not to mention that protein in red meat is highly bioavailable and digestible. It also contains the highest amounts of the amino acids leucine, isoleucine, and valine, which are really important if we're trying to build muscle, which is something that everyone should be trying to do. Also, the fats in red meat contain fat-soluble vitamins that you can't get from fruit or vegetable fats, and grass-fed beef also contains about 50% more omega-3s than grain-fed beef. But Tim, isn't it high in cholesterol and saturated fat just like eggs? Well, my answer to this one is one, I'm not a doctor, and two, none of the information in my video should be considered medical advice, but I do believe that high blood sugar, which stems from consumption of refined carb sugar and basically just carbs in general, leads to glycation and damage of LDL particles, which isn't very good for our cardiovascular system. We also know that when we eat saturated fat, our cholesterol is gonna go up. So instead of eating our meat with maybe a Coke or a piece of pie or Twizzlers or between two buns or a slice of bread, we should just eat meat and keep our carbs low so we don't see the occurrence of glycation from elevated levels of blood glucose and insulin, which is one of the biggest reasons why I like low carb nutrition plans. All right, so beef is the big winner. It also happens to be incredibly delicious, but we do have a bonus though, and I'm sure some of you out there have been wondering where whey protein fits into all of this. So whey protein is the most bioavailable and digestible protein and like eggs, it's often considered perfect, which is incredible. But the problem with whey is that it's kind of just a single nutrient, an important nutrient, but I do believe that you might as well get some other vitamins and minerals if you're gonna be eating anything in general. And it's just really important to eat the most nutrient dense food as possible. And I don't think I can classify whey as being a super nutrient dense food, but it is a perfect protein. So that's really, really great. All right, so feel free to leave a comment and let me know your thoughts. Also, I'm thinking of creating a super structured step-by-step -step weight loss program. And if you're interested in trying it out for free, go into the description down below and click the link. I don't want to toot my own horn, but I think it should be pretty good. And lastly, if you wanna learn about how I recommend macronutrient consumption with my clients, check out this video right here. All right, that's it. Go eat some protein.